recording. So we're going to talk about, so I can probably go right here. We're going to walk through a presentation on steganography and watermark. I will tell you, I did not create all of this. I created some of it. I stole a lot of it from other people and their names are at the end. So I'm just telling you up front, I didn't make all of it. I didn't make some of it though. Okay. So let's talk about steganography and digital watermarking. Okay. Steganography. We're going to talk about all this stuff, the definitions, examples, how it works. We're going to walk through a live demo and you're going to have to do a live demo. Okay. Great for hidden, you know, steganography is hidden or covered and graphene is to write. So basically it relates to cryptography. So we're basically hiding something. It scrambles the message where steganography just conceals the message. So we're hiding the message in this example in pictures. Okay. Ancient science, they talk about all the different things. They tattooed messages on people's heads. Let their hair grow back, send them across, shave their heads and read the messages. Gonna run out of paper sooner or later, okay? <laughs> They wrote secret message under wax, okay? They wrote messages on silk and covered them in wax and swallowed them. God had successes letters to hide concealed text. It's just all kinds of different ways they did it. You know, every other word, prison break. Anyone ever seen the show Prison Break? Someone had to watch that show. My yeah. mom watched it. So I've seen Seriously? That. Okay, y'all need to go watch it. All 18 seasons. Oh, right. I think it was only like five. <laughs> but in season one, he receives a letter from his son. And, you know, they go a long letter. And if you read the, the words from top to bottom on the right, it was kind of like a hidden message. Like, Dad, I'm fine. Don't come and look for me or whatever the heck it said. Kind of the same thing. It was a hidden message. Okay. Um, printing in the 1600s. It was banned in 1609. They, the index of primitive, there was a lot of books they banned. They just banned all kinds of stuff. And I think, how about this? This is from uh, Francis Beacon. If you look at this, so it says, um, the word flee is concealed under cover text, which says, stay until I come and get you. Now you notice like the ends, the font is different. So if you look at the end over here and the end over here, it's a different font. And then the E's, different fonts with E's. So basically, the message says, stay till I come and get you, but hidden in it was the word flee. Okay? I mean, this is real stuff here. So, crazy stuff. Um, here's some of the stuff they banned. Knitting instructions. Okay? Blank paper. X's and O's, microdot, crossword puzzles, stamps. List of grades because people started to think there was something hidden in it. Okay, um, Bruce Willis movie with a kid that solves the word search puzzle. Mercury Rising. Anyone see Mercury Rising? What do you guys do? Get off of Warcraft. Start watching these movies. <laughs> Basically, Mercury Rising. The kid solves. Crossword puzzle. I guess the government, there was these word search puzzles, whatever, out there. And there was a super tough one in there that was in there for years. No one, and if someone could break it, whatever. So the kid broke this thing, and then the world, oh my God, you know, they all start chasing them, gonna kill them, whatever. I don't know. But, uh, you know, you never know. So a lot of people freaked out. They were banning stuff. And uh, whatever. Agua Regia, they dissolved their metal in whatever the stuff is, and then send it across that way. Just all kinds of different ways they were hiding the stuff. Okay, computer science, we really no longer need physical materials. We can all do it with computers. How about Easter eggs? Anyone ever seen an Easter egg in an application? Okay, Excel, it's like version 97, or some version around there. I had to, uh, I got hired to teach a class at Gordon Cooper Tech. They wanted me to teach an advanced Excel class. <laughs> okay, what do you want me to teach? The advanced stuff. What? And so I'm like, okay, that's literally all they told me. So I'm like, well, what did they teach in the first class? We have no clue. <laughs> Great. So how am I going to go into this class, not having a clue what they know, 
Well, there was an Easter egg built into Excel 97. If you went to a specific cell, typed a specific value in it, hit enter, the entire program turned into a flight simulator. And you literally could fly around the screen in like an airplane. That was an Easter egg. Okay? There was a lot of programs that had that. I used to work at the software development flight at Tinker. They wrote an application to work at the command center. They had an Easter egg. It was weird. You, like if you went to the help about screen, double clicked on the, the top in the corner, then hit the letter T, then you know underscore twice and click. I didn't want to ever find it. But Easter eggs were very popular. I think it was Office 2010 in that period where they started to finally get rid of that stuff. I bet there's still some stuff out there we don't know about. Games, games do Easter eggs a lot. Yeah, just different things. But you know, there's just a lot of hidden stuff. So that's kind of what we're going to do here. Substitution says replace redundant, insignificant data. Okay. Uh, I, when I was taking, uh, I think my data structures course for my bachelor's, a guy was in class with me, super sharp guy. You all know what zip is, when zip now, compresses files. It takes a big file, makes it into a small file. He made a program that would compress any file down to like one byte. Problem was you couldn't undo it. <laughs> yeah. Because what they do is they replace stuff. Like, okay, I'll, I'll replace every, you know, the word, you know, uh, we'll say alphabet, the word alphabet with the letter A. So anytime you see the word alphabet, place the letter, you're looking for repeating stuff and replacing it. Okay. And that's what, what it looks for stuff it doesn't need. It comp compresses certain areas, substitute other things. And sooner or later, you make files smaller, but this program, you could never undo it. So it was, but he had a very good logical reasoning for everything he did, and the teacher loved it. The problem is you could undo it. So, I mean, he even said that. He goes, this doesn't work, because you can't undo it. But the logic behind doing it was all sound. But there becomes a point where you got to stop sooner or later. Okay. Injection says in injects covert information on top of other stuff. Or generation. Maybe we're going to generate text over stuff. Okay. We're going to... Now, there's also something called the least significant bit. Okay. Superman 4. Richard Pryor. You remember this movie? Seriously? Keep talking. Okay. He stole half a cent, basically, from everybody's paycheck. Basically, you know when you get paid, it's always rounded to the cents. But technically, there's an excess money there. So say, you know, I'm making, you know, $100.42. It might have been 42.3 cents. So where does that 0.3 go? Well, he wrote something and stole the 0.3. He really wasn't stealing it. They weren't getting it in the first place. They weren't getting it in the first place. And it, was, it would just happened to be in that movie. So it was a Superman 4. So, but at least significant bit. Okay, so... Now, if I was to take this marker and draw a line on the screen, you know, and got another marker the same age and draw another line, can you tell them apart? They ask you those. You can kind of tell those apart. But do you think your eyes are good enough to see very subtle color changes? You're not. I mean, we can see our computers can generate millions and millions of color combinations, and we can't see them. So why don't we just replace them with stuff that you know, the human eye can't see, okay? Um, dog whistles. Don't know what dog whistle is. Can you hear a dog whistle? No, because it's at a frequency that we can't hear. There's also the light spectrum. This uses infrared. We can't see that. So there is light. We just can't see it. Well, same thing here. You take the least significant bit and replace it with something else. We don't need it, okay? And can embed it in the last position. Think about like, you know, if I was, you know, I had a, a bank account at Mid First Bank on the south side of town. And years ago, I was very anal about balancing my checkbook. In one month, everything cleared by 10 cents off. Every single thing was off by a dime. Really, really bothered me. So I went to the bank, oh, no big deal. It was just a typo in our reporting. I'm like, no, that's a big deal. You're managing my money and you're giving me a report that's off by 10 cents on everything. So I closed my bank and moved it. But, you know, the point is to them, that was no big deal. On here, you know, the least significant bit. Now, would anyone die if your paycheck was a penny less? No. 
How many of you see a penny on the floor and just walk by it? A lot of people. I pick up everyone. I said, am I getting a lot of money? No, but I'm getting a penny. Maybe a dime or a quarter. So in here, you know, we're not using the least significant bits, so hide something in them. Okay. Here's an, you can watch the whole thing if you want. They're, they're hiding a picture of a flower in that picture of the boat up there. And they, they go over about how it works, but we're not going to go over the whole thing. We're actually going to see an example of it here in a minute. But you can also embed stuff in WAV files and MP3 files. Okay? You can embed stuff in video files. You can embed stuff in the TCP IP header. Like the urgent pointer. I think I talked about it two weeks ago when I was here. Urgent pointer. We don't need that anymore. The don't fragment flag. We really don't need it anymore. Put something in it. Good. A sub leg with substitution. You can do stuff with that. Um, a lot of these don't work anymore. Let's see if snow works. No guarantees. Oh, it's an applet, so we're not doing that one. Okay. Uh, one of these does work. Spam mimic. This is the one. Okay, I'm going to code a message. Okay, today is Tuesday. Period. Y'all agree with that? I'm going to copy it. I'm going to encode it. There's what it comes up with. Kind of looks like the emails we get, doesn't it? Okay. I'm actually going to take this text. And I'm going to uh, copy this text out and put it over here in notepad in case i screwed this up okay there it is okay now i'm going to i'm just gonna say decode and you see i got two days tuesday okay so i encoded it and decoded it. now i'm gonna go to that text and i'm going to take this e right here if i can click in there successfully seriously why can't i click maybe i do it down here Okay, copy the clipboard. Okay. What the heck? Why won't let me change it? Okay, I'm going to go into this text and I'm going to remove that space right there. Okay. So, what I did was right after this percent sign, I'm going to give her that space. Seriously? How do I? I used to be able to do this. Your message is get encoded and spam is should be able to decode it. Launch your mail program, how to paste in. Let's go back to the main page and click decode. Have they changed? Okay. Have they changed your drop? Okay. So you see that space is now missing. It's gobbledygook, okay? Now I'm going to get down here and put that space back. Did it work? Y'all see that? So that message right here encoded in it is today is Tuesday. So how do you know the spam you're getting is not a secret message from somebody? So let's change. Okay, so this one decodes fine, does it? This one this decodes fine. Now I'm gonna go up here. Now we're gonna change the E to a lowercase e. Decode. Jump. Now let's put it back to an uppercase E. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Okay, and uh, yeah, um, I'm not doing it this year. A few years ago, for a test, I made a spam message and sent it to all my students. I think it was on the final. And I said, I sent them an email says, do what you need to do. So they reply back, please remove me and everything else. I'm like, what? <laughs> and like two people went to this website and decoded it. They got caught in the code uh, Sorry. It was crazy. So, all right. But um, there's lots of different examples out there. But that, that's a cool example. Okay. Second analysis, process of analyzing, erasing, decoding, and detecting. Erasing is the easiest. You saw. I change one little bit, what happens? It's all gone. Yet decoding is very hard. 
And this hidden information is usually encrypted, not always. Okay, detecting is the most important, which is what your assignment's gonna be all about. Okay, uh, there's also some covert channels. This is knowing you have a covert channel is significant. Knowing there's a way stuff is being transported is a problem. When I was up in Tulsa, the cyber crime unit would come to speak to us and they were saying, they were called out on a child pornography case. They got there and couldn't find any. Yet they found a lot of DVDs and CDs full of pictures of golf courses. The guy was an avid golfer. Everyone had child pornography embedded in them. Yeah. Um, Subway Jared, remember they couldn't find nothing? They brought in that dog who detected a flash drive. Did you even know they have that? There's like four in the nation. Dogs that can detect flash drives. That's crazy. They brought in the dog. He found the hidden flash drive in the house full of child pornography. So it's crazy stuff, okay? Watermarking, okay? Watermarking, you see on this picture over here, see over her midsection is the word gymnast. No, it's hard to see. It's kind of like your, your kids or you, some of you are quite young, go to school, go to the prom. What do they do? It has prom written over it or proof written over it. That's a watermark, okay? I used to take care of their website. What they would do is they give out pictures for free. But if you want it, but if you buy them, there's no watermarks on them. Getty Images does the same thing. A lot of pictures on Google, when you download a picture, it's got stuff on it. You can get the picture for free with a watermark on it. But if you want it without, you got to pay for it. Okay? A lot of places do that. Okay? It's really there to provide integrity. We, it's going to be hard to remove that, yet some stuff can do it now. Okay? So, all right. So watermarking, the goal is, does not impair the quality. It's really, you know, we can't remove it, but it's really to tell, you know, proof of ownership, basically. It's, that's a small amount of information, beats data. You could still see the picture right there. But, you know, if I was going to use this professionally, no, I wouldn't want it because it's got that word across the name. Okay. They talk about, you know, what, like the amount of data. Siganography, we want to hide as much as possible. Watermarking, we don't care the amount. We just want to basically prove, prove integrity. Um, ease of detection. Siganography is very hard to do. Watermarking, we don't care if they detect it. That's the whole point. We want them to know it's there. You know, so. All right. Um, you can go to stigmaarchives.com. There is tons of software out there. Um, I've looked at lots of them. And the program we're using today is very old and it's going to crash on you. But there's really nothing better out there. It works fine for what we're doing. I tried to redo this lab with different tools, but it never, they never work. This seems to work the best. Okay. Um, we're going to be using these tools here in a minute. And they're teeny tiny. It's like, you know, 20 K. It's so small. Okay. Um, this got me in trouble at one point. But uh, it says, Al-Qaeda operatives have been sending hundreds of encrypted messages that have been hidden in files and digital photographs on eBay. The volume of messages has nearly doubled in the last month. They think Al-Qaeda is hiding stuff. Um, I'll get the other one in a second. I, ha I put this picture up, but the picture's no longer there. Um, they were, like it says, they, were, they think they were hiding stuff on eBay, okay? They're embedding stuff on pictures on eBay. So what eBay did to solve that was... See in the bottom right hand corner of that picture, the little picture of the camera, I know it's hard to see. What they would do is they started putting that watermark on every picture uploaded to eBay. Because you saw, if I manipulate it at all, we lose it, correct? So by putting that watermark, if there was something embedded in there, it's now gone. eBay still does it, but you can no longer see the watermark. If you took your picture, upload it to eBay, then download it again, it's a different picture. It's been modified slightly. That way, if there was something better, it's gone. Authorities also investigating information about detainees that suggest that Al Qaeda members have possibly been lied into hiding messages inside por pornographic images. If you know anything about Muslims, what is their deal with pornography? Are they allowed to watch it? No, they can't. So, yeah, uh, a student turn me into academic affairs but be, for being Muslimophobic for telling that. First of all, it came from CNN. And the funny thing was I had a Muslim student come to me, oh, 
couple years ago. Uh, what's that holiday where they have to pray? Ramadan? Okay. Came to me, says, hey, I'm Muslim, and they had to pray each day for like this time period. So I found them a classroom. I said, go for it. I mean, I don't care. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you are. So I set up the classroom. He can go pray. So when that student reported me, this other student wrote a letter, and he's like, I've never met a person that's, you know, not racist. I, I don't care if you're black or white, female, male, you know, whatever. But yeah, they thought it was a Islamic phobia for doing that, whatever. Okay, so so we're going to, and there's all the, the sources, okay? Now, um, any questions on what I've covered so far? We haven't done it yet, so now we're going to walk through doing it, okay? There's a folder up there called stego tools you must unzip it i've already unzipped it i'm actually i'm gonna zip this up to show you send to compressor folder okay okay hey, when you download it's gonna look exactly like that if you double click on it it's gonna look like that like that okay you need to unzip it you're gonna take this you're gonna if you just drag it you can do extract here or if you have 7-Zip installed, I'm sorry, you can do extract here. That's all you gotta do. Basically take this, right click on it, say, where'd the extract go? Wasn't there an extract there? You get a drag. There it is, you gotta drag it a little bit. There it is, drag it a little bit. Extract, now I'll call it Stigma Tools 2. And there we go. Now you should notice there'll be stable tools and stable tools too. Okay, and you go in there, and in there, and there's your tools. Now, here's what you don't do. Don't click on steg detect. See what it does? Okay, let's try steg break. I had a student come to me the day before you. Dude, I've been running this thing for the entire week. It won't do anything. Because he did that. That's not how the tool works. Okay. And the funny thing is, I give you state detect instruction guide, right? Right? You can do it. There it is. I give you the instructions right there. And I also give you this little file. If you use it exactly like I give it to you here, it'll work perfectly. Okay? So we're going to use this right here. I'm going to highlight this and do edit copy. Now, watch this. I want to go into this directory because I got this picture right here. Okay? The file name is Church with Mindy. Mindy's hiding in this picture somewhere. Whatever. What? Oh, I got to zoom. Oh, this is... Hold on, let's open this with something else. Open it with um, Windows Photo Viewer. That one's easier. That way I can zoom in. So Wendy's not there, Mindy's not over here, Mindy's not there, Mindy's not over there, she's not over here by this cone. Y'all agree, Mindy's not up on top. Anyone see Mindy anywhere? She might be, let's look. Maybe, no, not there. Maybe there, maybe she's over, no, Mindy is nowhere. Y'all agree Mindy's not there? Well, Mindy is there. You're going to be shocked when you see where Mindy is. So, you must run this from the command line, kind of like you did Scalpel. Scalpel. The easiest way is go to the directory you want, go up here and type CMD. Ta-da, I'm in the directory already. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? Now, mine happens to be single tools, single tools, tools, single, because I zipped it and unzipped it and rezipped it. So, I'm going to take that command I just copied. I'm going to go edit. Paste. There's that command. Steg detect dash tpjoi space dash s5 asterisk dot jpg. Y'all see that? I hit enter and it runs. It's going to tell you there's corrupt jpg data. Don't worry about that. That's not. It's going to happen. You're going to get tons of those errors. This can also tell you premature end of segment. That's not a problem. Don't worry about it. But it does tell you church with Mindy has something hidden in it with a program called JP Hide. Okay, excuse me, see that there, JP Hide? You're gonna need to know that. Because for your assignment, you need to submit what that says. In this case, you would submit JP 
parenthesis, asterisk, parenthesis. If the number of asterisks is kind of like the probability. One asterisk might be low, two asterisks might be more, three asterisks might be more higher, and it keeps going. Negative means negative, but negative can also be positive, which is kind of weird, but we're going to get there in a second. So now I'm going to run steg break. So steg detect is used to detect steganography. Steg break is used to break it. So I'm going to go back into my usage file, which I gave you. I'm going to copy this out. Now, there's a file in here called words. You need that file. And it's right there. It's really just a dictionary. It's huge. It's just a dictionary. See that? All right. So now I'm going to go back here. I'm going to paste that command in here. I got steg break, dash rules at I and I, dash F words. And it loaded it and it told me church with menu.jpg, JPI version 5, and this thing in parentheses is the password. So the password is church. So I ran steg detect up here, this first one, and it found it, said, haha, JP hide was used. And I ran steg break, it told me JP hide version 5, and the password is church. Okay, so far so good. Now you can use Windows. This is JPHS Win. You open this up. Yes, you accept, and this program will crash on you. Positively, might not tonight, but it will crash on you, positively. I'm going to open up a JPEG. I'm going to open up Church with Mindy. Now I'm going to seek. So I got something in there, so I'm going to seek. And the password was church. Okay, so I'm going to call it Mindy. G. Okay. So now. Oh, look, see, I told you, I told you it was going to crash. Always crashes. So now I have a file. Okay, again, this was the original one. We're going to open up the original one again. There's the original. Now let's open up this one. I mean, it's very faint, but if you look closely, you can see her. You ready? Right there. She's on the bench. See? That picture of Mindy and her dad sitting on a bench was embedded inside the other picture. You can't even see it. It's crazy. You can embed other stuff. Now, this is an important part. So if we ran these tools, we got these results. It says Church with Mindy has something hidden in it. The password is church. It doesn't tell you what's hidden in it. In this case, it happens to be a JPEG. But what if it wasn't a JPEG? What if it was a PDF? Could I hide a PDF? Sure I can. But what if you are extracting and think it's a PDF? You're going to do that and you're going to be like, well, that sucks. That file's corrupt. So how, what do you do? How do you find out what the heck that file is? Hex editor. Open it up and look at the signature. I don't think I have a hex editor installed in here, do I? I don't think I do. Do I have, did I install hex workshop? Get away. Oh, yeah, I did. I did. Yeah, hex workshop. We're going to open up. We're going to go forensics, stego tools, stego tools two, stego tools. Oh, where'd it go? There it is. Mindy.pdf. That's going to what? FFDA. What's an FFDA? JPEG. That's important because the stuff you're working with, they're not all JPEG. Some are text, some are. PDFs, some are JPEG, some are all kinds of stuff. So you see what I did there? I extracted it, wasn't sure, got new initially what it was. This example I extracted is the PDF, it didn't work. I open it up, oh, it's a JPEG. So then I go in here and I'm like, JPG. And sure enough, now we find Mindy. Okay. Now I'm going to give you, do a demo and show you how this tool really works, how you can use it to do other stuff. We're going to Google. All right. I need a subject. What am I going to search for a picture of? Dog. dog. Okay. Actually, I'm going to do dog.jpg. So I'm going to do big dog. Go to images. I need a big dog. It's There's a big dog. 
Nah, he's not that big. You need a bigger pipe than that. Actually, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to do setting tool size. I want a big dog. Large. <laughs> okay, now we got a big dog. Okay, there's my dog. So I'm going to save this big dog. Oh, move the dog. I'm going to do it in the same directory. I'm going to call it big dog at JPG. Okay. Now let's get rid of big dog. Now let's make sure it works. Okay, we can still see the dog. I'm going to run steg detect again. Aha. It says big dog has something hidden in it. Now, again, I just downloaded it off the internet. So we might have found something. Might have. <laughs> Let's look. So now we're going to run steg break. I mean, that's got two asterisks. Church of Bindi only had one. So we're like double the percentage here. Okay, crypt data, crypt data. Other three files. Now, if I hit control C one time, it'll show me the progress through the dictionary. Remember that words file I showed you with all the words in it? So we are currently 5% of the way through the dictionary. Now we're 9%. I'm hitting Control C one time to get the progress. If I hit it twice, it stops. Okay. I doubt there's anything in it. But there's two stops. Yeah, that's a very good point. I'm glad that happened. Sometimes you'll have five stars with nothing in it. Sometimes, okay, see how Mindy. Right here, what's Mindy say? Some of your assignments, they're going to say negative, but they got stuff in it. Because you can, if you think about it, steg detect detects them, but that's all it does. So you can technically run steg break on everything. And why bother detecting them? Well, because I made you do detect. Because what you can do is you can run steg break to break them all, then the ones that broke then run steg detect to get that information from them. The, re the only reason I'm doing that is sometimes negatives are positive, sometimes positives are negative, sometimes one asterisk is better than two asterisks. It's not an exact science. Again, it's just a tool trying to guess. And I'm pretty sure if we ran that all day, it wouldn't find anything. And it might. So now we're going to go back into my files over here. We're going to run this tool again. We're going to open up a JPEG. We're going to open up the big dog. Now we are going to hide. We're going to use church again. So we know it's in there. What do you want to hide in it? Let's hide. How about a PDF? We're going to hide the instructions in it. You sure you want to do this? Now I might tell you, whoa, that's quite a large thing. You might lose some of it. And sometimes you will. So now I'm going to save the JPEG as Big dog two. All right. So now I'm going to run this again. Run steg detect. Big dog two has three asterisks now. So we're doing good. We're, doing, we're gaining here. Now run steg break. And it did. Big dog two has something hidden in it. Version five with church. Y'all see that? And again, it's going to sit there forever on the rest of them, so we're just going to stop that. So we know Big Dog 2 has something in it. So now we're going to get this program again. We're going to open up Big Dog 2. And we're going to seek. Now, I bet the password is church. And we're going to call it file1.jpg, because I'm not sure what it is. I'm going to crash. Good. Good job. We're going to open it. And it's corrupt. Why? Because it's a PDF. So how can I find that out? I can say hex workshop. I can open this up and say, what the heck is in file number one? Oh, look, it's a PDF. See how we did that? Trust me, somebody's the email one. Every time I open the save a JPEG, they're corrupt. Are you sure they're JPEGs? What? You know I'm going to get that message. There are no other 
Okay, there it had a PDF and yes. Right. Seems hard to say. Run separate perspective of what this might end up whether it's the Okay, now I'm going to show you the assignment okay. and answer your question. Here's the assignment. You can call it to investigate a website that has a large amount of suspicious photos on it. We need to have numerous pictures embedded in it. Okay, years ago, I used Animal Planet. I downloaded thousands of pictures from Animal Planet. Oh my God, did I get the complaints? Why did I get complaints? There was naked horses. <laughs> and there was a horse making a baby horse. I'm like, it's, it's Animal Planet. They wouldn't complain to the team. Oh my God, that's so, oh, oh, I can't, oh no, I can't watch that. I'm like, it's Animal, Animal Planet. Planet. I mean, there was no boobs or anything, but it was, maybe there was horse boobs. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Tools you need are stake detect, stake break, JPS H win. Okay, you don't. Okay, you need. Have we done W get yet? Great. We need to do W get now. I need to find W get. Actually, we pause this just for one second. Okay, I went and got a file called W get. Okay, I'm going to unzip it right here. Right click, extract. Okay, everybody with me, how to do that. I'm gonna go into WGET. Resume recording? Yes, I did, I did resume, yes. Okay, now I'm gonna go into the bin directory. If I can get this down here. Now I'm gonna go into the command prompt again. And you'll see I'm in that same directory. Don't click on it, you need to go to the command prompt. And by the way, a lot of these forensic tools work so much better on the command prompt. When we get to nmap, you can also use nmap, but nmap's better. So, yeah, so w get um, HTTP colon slash slash www.rose.edu. Got the whole website. Think I downloaded the whole website that quick? Yeah. Let's look. Well, it should have downloaded something. Didn't it get one? Didn't get any? Okay, let's do. Yeah, let me get rid of the HTTP. Yeah, darn it, it needs an SSL connection. Um, I need another website. MSN.com. There we go. I got MSN. Downloaded the entire website. Right there. So I got MSN.com. Check it out. So. What it does, in the past I didn't give the hints. There is an instruction for here. You need to tell it to get it recursively. Okay? Now I'm going to let this go for a second, then I'm going to stop it. I put a dash R. I'll make it so it's up higher. So I did wget dash R msn.com, okay? And seriously? I didn't, I didn't only get that. There it goes. Okay, I needed the www. See how it's going? He's getting the whole website now. Do you agree? Okay, we're going to stop it. If you look, now I have MSN, and I have their English files, and I have something about the Oscars and whatever this is. I was, I was going to get their entire website. Okay. Um, so that's wget. You need it. Because... In your assignment, I told you you need it. Assignment is, the individual assignment, do it yourself. Go to this website. Website's right here. Go to this website. And I got some pictures. You need to download all these pictures. The Berlin Wall. And there's Trump's walls. You can download them individually if you want. There's 9,800 of them. You can go to the Stan wall. Okay, so look, they're all there. Let's go to the Western wall. Okay, I think they're all walls, okay? But if you happen to find a, 
wall with a naked picture. I didn't do it on purpose. <laughs> okay. Right. Uh, we even got some prison walls in here. Prison walls could speak. Oh, oh that was said to stay. Okay. So what you can do, you have a choice. You can download them all individually. Where my oh, I gotta go back to the thing. Log back in. Hold on. Oh, you did it wrong. Did it wrong again. There we go. Yeah. So need this glass. Go back into lab four. Okay. So go to the website. Download all 9,638 files. I have had people go one at a time. Let me tell you why this is important. Okay, uh, Laura Lewis, a prior student of ours, went on to Tulsa University. Some of you know this story already. She was in Tulsa University, working up in the cybercrime unit, helping them with whatever their stuff. They all had to do internships up there. And there was a police officer sitting in a back corner of the room every day. Hating life. She was always sitting there, so depressed. She was there every single day. So Laura went up to him one day. She's a super friendly person. She, you know, hated nobody. She was, hey, what's going on? And he just hated life. And what it was, he was working a child pornography case. His task was to go to this child pornography website and download every picture of child pornography. Can you imagine opening up every picture, save as? Opening, save as. You can't unsee some of that stuff. Laura's like, Use WGET. And the guy's like, what are you talking about? So she showed him WGET. Put the whole website in like a couple seconds. He's like, you mean I didn't have to look at that stuff? No, use it. Get all the walls. Done. So WGET's a very handy tool. You can use it to download YouTube videos. You can download all kinds of stuff with it. So there's probably a newer version that I'm giving you. So if you want the new version, I'm pretty sure if I went on Google and typed in WGET, Oh, oh, look at there, right there, done. Download WGET, free software. So, I mean, this is probably a newer version. Some of the stuff I give, I haven't updated. So, get the new one. Maybe it does even more stuff. So, WGET's a cool tool. Let's download the website. Now, to answer your question back there, what I would do is it's going to put them all in separate directories, you know, prison walls and Trump walls and Stan walls and all that. Copy the tools into that directory. And then run separate instances of it. See what I'm saying? Because there's 9,600. So imagine we had the directory called prison walls. Copy stable tools into it. All of the files, even the DLLs. Then run stake break from inside that directory. And like run as jobs? Yes. The then get another directory with, you know, Trump walls. Is there a, is there a command prompt um, setting that runs it as a job so you don't have to open the six command prompts? You guys open the six command prompts. Okay. It doesn't support multi threading. As far as I know, the new version might. I don't know. But try it. I mean, because that will work. Now, now let me continue on. We're not done yet. Go back to here. Utilizing tools listed above to take, break, and gain access to the files in question. You're free to use other tools if you want. And a hex editor. Obviously, we know why we need a hex editor. Submit the answers for lab four. The questions look very similar to this. So there's a hidden value in a file. The value you're looking for is 6287. So for instance, Mindy was a picture of Mindy on a park bench. Well, when you break a file and extract what's inside of it, you're going to find 6287. It might be a picture of the number 6287 might be the text 6287. I don't know, it could be anything. I made a couple years ago. So break the files until you find one with 6287 in it. When you find it, it says, what is the MD5 hash of the JPEG containing the hidden file? So when you find Trump wall parenthesis 82.jpg, get the MD5 of it. You know how to do that. We did that last lab, okay? Okay, so it says, I want the hash value of the JPEG, not what was hidden inside of it. So, for instance, if the Trump wall had a picture 
H7 in it. I don't want the MD5 with the picture that was hidden in it. I want a picture of the Trump wall. That way I know you got the correct file. What was the name of the original JPEG? Now this is very important. See this right here? Want the complete name. So it'll be the wall name and a space, parenthesis, pound, 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 parenthesis, dot JPEG. If you leave off the JPEG, is that the same name? No, because it could be whatever, you know, Trump wall dot JPEG, Trump wall dot PDF, Trump wall dot dot, Trump wall dot whatever. Give me the entire name. If you don't include JPEG, you're not getting any points. Now, if it's not a JPEG, well, they are. But if it wasn't, you'd have to put the correct file name. All through this course, I want complete file names, including the extension. A file name, a lot of people say, well, no, it's file name and extension. No, the complete file name includes the extension, okay? What's the password you use to extract the hidden data? So I found the wall, stake break, broke it, said the password was church. So you would put church right here, okay? Okay, what was the stake detect results? Negative or JPH, whatever though, whatever you saw. You know, that stuff I showed you with a one asterisk or two asterisks or negative. The only reason I'm doing you that, that is I want you to realize just because it says negative, it might have something hidden in it. Okay. Normally, you would think you'd run stake detect, find all the ones that potentially have something hidden in it, then only work on those. But that's not the case because sometimes the negatives also have stuff embedded in it. You have 20 to do. There is... I think 200. I'm going to tell you up front. You need to do one on the test. Randomly selected one. So if you do your 20 and one of your 20 is randomly selected on a test, you're golden. But if you only keep your 20 and it's a different one on the test, guess what? You're going to have to figure out which one it is. Start doing them. For every one you do, keep track. Make an Excel spreadsheet. Put all this information in for every one you find. That way when you go to take the test, when I ask for which one had tomato in it. Tomato was in whatever, Berlin Wall 85, and then you're dead. See what I'm saying? You're randomly selecting 20, but you're gonna have to do one more on the test. And you got about a 10% chance of getting one that's yours. I like my odds. <laughs> you got 28 minutes to do all the questions. I like my odds. Okay. All right. It's a fun assignment, but, you know, download it first. There's quite a few. We're talking a couple gigs of data. So if your internet's really slow at home, download them here. Put them on a flash drive. You're, you know, put on the laptop here. But I recommend downloading them and copying the tools into the subdirectors. Everybody understand what I'm talking about with that? So you could put all the files into one directory, but then the problem is, okay, say you're in, you know, uh, it could take you forever because you're running one instance. It could take you all week to run all that. Whereas you literally could run it multiple times. I don't know exactly how many I got in each wall. I think it's 20. I think it's 20 per wall, maybe only 10 per wall. I can find that out if you really want to know. But uh, it'd be easier if you do one wall at a time or you know, run them separately, okay? Everybody understand how this works? Any questions at all on this project? So we're gonna be documenting all nine bad images? No, no, just the ones with stuff in it. If you run stake break and it doesn't break it, no, don't worry about it. Now stake break, will run through the entire dictionary on every single file. Now, what you can also do, I didn't show you this. Let's go, let's see. Would your, would your disk read speeds affect this a lot? It could, it could. Okay, I'm gonna go back to stag break, okay? Is that running stag break here? Is it, yeah, okay, it's, it's done, okay. I can actually run steg break and do a, try to get up so you can see it in the cheap seats in the back. You can actually put a greater than results.txt. Now what's happening is it's actually gonna write the results to a text file. And let's go to steg tools, steg tools two, steg tools. Now we got this results file. If I open it, it's already got those in it. 
So it can actually be running. Now, the problem is you're not going to see it here, but you're going to see it here. If you open it like with TextPad, TextPad will notify you when the file changes. Like, well, the files change. We know that means you got another one. It's only putting the results in there for you. That way, if your computer crashes or something, you have the results in a text file. You no pad plus plus also. Okay, yeah. no pad plus plus TextPad are great tools because if this file changes, it's going to pop up and say. I mean, that way, while it's running, you can go break Big Dog Two and Church with me, and you get working on those while you're waiting on another one to get detected. Uh, I don't know. I, I mean, you know. you can always rename this as a CSV, yeah. then import it in the colon. Yeah, you can do it any way you want. So, but the point is that way you're not waiting on finishing everything. So now you can look at. You can already start working on these first two, even though the program we know over here well, um, is still going with thirty five percent. You don't have it exporting to a text document. It like shows, shows the results while it's still working. Right. As well. The problem is if you got two hundred and fifty, this window scrolls back eighty lines only. So this window you can only scroll back so far, and if it's two hundred and fifty files and it scrolls back eighty, and you start running it when you go to bed at night, next thing in the morning you only see the last eighty. Ah, darn it! I missed it. Okay, see what I'm saying? Again, you hit Control C one time, and it tells you where you're at. And if I do it twice, it'll stop it, and it just go into your file. That's probably the best hint, which I don't normally give that hint, but you know, I might have one year. I don't know. But does everybody understand what I just said? How I did that? I ran the tool greater than results.txt. Now this is going to overwrite results.txt. If you do it with two of them, it will append to it. Know the difference? One, it's going to create a brand new results.txt. You put your results in. But maybe it stops halfway through and you want to start it again. If you had it append and the, like, the text file doesn't exist, does it still make any Yes. Okay. Yes, it will. With two of them, if results.txt exists, it'll add to it. Yes. So if we do append and we have four different. I don't know if you could have all the point to the same direction. I'm not sure on that. I didn't try that. It might work. Because you could probably put a file path. Oh, you can. Yeah. But you might be able, like he's saying, is, you know, put a pen and point them all to the same directory, and that way it's all making one big huge file. I mean, one try it. File might not try, it. try it. I'm going to try it. <laughs> yeah, might as well. I mean, so. Okay. All right. Everybody happy? And I, okay, I'm going to be nice, and I'm going to let you see how many. Okay, you have 20 out of this entire. Wow, yeah. So you might have all 20 out of the same wall. Now, let, I'm even going to be nicer to you and even show you what that looks like. I'm going to pause this real quick just in case it shows too much. Sorry, I can't put that on the recording. Because if you saw that quickly, you saw which file had something in it. There's a question name, which you don't get to see had the name of it. Anyone catch what that was? No. It was Berlin Wall something. So something like that. So there you go. You have an idea of what it is. I couldn't remember how that was going to display to you guys. But so it's a fun lab. It's really not all that time consuming. Get it running soon, and then go back and just work on it. Because once you know with state break what they are, then you can just go through the rest. Make an Excel spreadsheet, put them all in there, and you'll be good to go. So, all right? We're about out of time anyway, so I'm going to stop the recording.